Hi guys, this is Pestilli and welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. In this video, I'm covering all of Peacekeeper's tasks throughout all of Escape from Tarkov. If you're after a specific task, you can go down the timeline links down below in the description. If there's any minor changes, you'll find them down in the pin post down below. However, there's lots of major changes or new tasks added to the game. I'll be making an entire new video and you'll find a link to that video in the description and pin post down below. So be sure to check that out before you go any further. But guys, without further ado, let's crack straight into it. Fishing gear. For this task, you're required to get an SV-98 sniper rifle and a multi-tool and head into shoreline. You can buy an SV-98 rifle from Prepper, but you do receive one of these from the task, including the multi-tool. Multi-tools can be purchased from Mechanic if you require one still, but you should already get one from the task. So unless you die, you should be fine here. Once you head into shoreline, you need to go down to the gas station and in front of the gas station on the beachhead, You'll notice there's like a big concrete pillar with a little dinghy next to it. Lay down next to the dinghy and place it down here. It will place down the SV-98 first and then the multi-tool. Survive an extractor raid and hand it in. Tiger Safari. For this one, you need three M2000 markers and to head into customs. Once you head into customs, you'll have to mark the three Humvees. The first one is located near the ice cream hut towards the construction area. And the last two are located towards the checkpoint. Mark the three Humvees, get out and hand it in. Scrap metal. For this one, you're required to head into shoreline with the three M2000 markers. Head to the three T90 tanks. The first one is located just down from the radar tower and it's crashed on top of the bridge. The next one's located near the rock passage. There's a bunk there and next to the bunker, you'll see the T90 tank. And the last one's located in the village. Once you've marked all three of these tanks, get out, survive the raid and hand it in. Eagle Eye. For this one, you're required to pick up the SAS disc from both the crashed drones on shoreline. The first one is located on the road to custom side of the map. There's like a checkpoint tower that scavs spawn at, and from there, you'll be able to move towards the radar tower, and you'll see a destroyed house. Next to the destroyed house, you'll see the crashed drone. Head to the side of it, open it up, and pull out the SAS disc. The second one is located by the bunker at the rock passage area. You need to head towards the swamp from the, the bunker and not far from the bunker, you'll be able to find the second crash drone. After you loot the second SAS disc, survive the raid, hand them in. Humanitarian supplies. For this one, you're required to hand in five MRE ration packs. You can buy these directly from the flea market. Then you need to buy two M2000 markers and mark the trucks in shoreline. The first one is located down by the coastal area near the CCP extract. It's a fenced off area and you'll see the truck just parked there. The second one is located at the back of the resort just by the admin building. On top of this, you're required to kill 10 scavs whilst wearing the untar armored vest and helmet. You aren't required to use any specific gun, so just wear these two pieces of armor. After you've met all these requirements, hand it in and move on to the next task. Cult part one. For this one, you're required to head into shoreline and go near the swamp area. There's an actual path you can follow, which is from the church. You can actually follow a blood path that heads up to the house located slightly above the swamp. Once you go in there, you'll find a dead body on the ground. Once you've walked inside there, you've completed this task and all you need to do is survive the raid. Cult part two. For this one, you're required to go into customs, woods and shoreline and mark each of the marked circles. For customs, this is located in the three-story dorms. On the third story, you'll need the marked room key, open up the door, place the marker down and wait for the time limit. For woods, this is located near the med bag checkpoint. From the checkpoint, you pretty much just walk straight into the woods area in the direction of what I call silencer shack. Once you see the mark circle, mark it and move on. The last one's located on shoreline in the east wing on the third floor. You'll see the candles outside the room. And then once you're inside there, you'll see a bathtub with a scav inside there and a pig on his head. Mark the actual scav and then you'll be finished. Spa Tour Part 1. For this one, you need to kill 7 scavs on shoreline with 12 gauge shotguns and all being headshots. My suggestion for this will be following the same path that I've spoken about in the prepper quest lines where you need to kill scavs. Focusing on the bus depot, power station and the gas station. For killing scavs with the 12 gauge and trying to get headshots, I'd highly recommend using slugs and any kind of sight on a shotgun. Just aim at the very top of their head and uh, with the muzzle clearance, you should be able to get them with the slugs. The best slug in the game at the moment is the AP-20 round, but pretty much any slug will be able to do a headshot. Bar Tour Part 2. For this one outside the front of the resort on shoreline, you need to get two M2000 beacons. Once you've got the beacons and you're out the front of the resort, you'll see the chopper. Mark the chopper, and then you need to head towards the eastern wing side of the outside area of the compound, just by the road. You can mark anywhere on the road, and you'll be able to complete this task. Spa Tour Part 3. 
For this one, you need to find WD-40 100mm, which is the one square sized, two clean wipers, two corrugated hoses, and two ox bleach. For the WD-40 100mm, you can find these pretty consistently in Oli on interchange on the shelvings throughout the area. Same with the clean wipers, corrugated hose, and the bleached for that fact. However, I would highly suggest that if you are struggling with any of these items, you could go into your hideout to the lavatory and craft them there. The WD-40 100 mils can be crafted from the uh, 400 mils with the metal scissors. Other places you can actually find these items as well is also in the Shoreline Resort. Uh, the far ends of each side of the resort as well as the administration building has a fair few spawns for these items. The bleach can be crafted in the hideout as well. For this one, you are required to get one soap, one alkali and one sodium and that will make you five bleach. The clean wiper you can craft for one vodka and one shampoo. And corrugated hoses can be crafted for one silicon tube, three wires, and three insulating tape, being the blue tape. Now ensuring these are all found in RAID, that's why crafting can be really helpful. Uh, you hand all these in and you can move on. Spa tour part four. For this one, you need to go to the west and east wings room 220 to in order to get the generators found. Now the west generator is actually found in room 218. However, if you get the 220 key, you can go out onto the balcony and see it through the window, but the 218 key will get you in there. With the east wing, you don't need a key at all. You can just open the door and head in and see it. Once you've seen both of these, you just need to survive the raid and hand them in. Bar tour part five. For this one, you're required to go into shoreline and pick up the resort key. Now this key is only available to pick up when you're on this task and you're required to go to the bunker by the rock passage extract. Once you go inside the bunker, there'll be a seat. On top of the seat will be the key, and you just pick up the key and extract the raid. Hopefully, the rock passage extract will be open by the green smoke, and you can just extract through that. Spa Tour Part 6. For this task, you're required to hand over $8,000, and by this stage, you should have already collected $8,000 from a lot of your tasks, and you should be quite wealthy when it comes to dollars. However, if you are struggling, head over to Peacekeeper Level 1, buy the $8,000 or the remaining dollars, and hand this in. Spa Tour Part 7, for this one you are required to find 4 morphine injectors found in RAID, 2 alkali, 2 corrugated hoses and 2 5 litre propane tanks. Now, with the morphine injectors, uh, you should have a good understanding where to find these from the therapist task. However, you can now craft these in the hideout as a last resort. This will require one lot of meds, one painkillers, and one disposable syringe. However, you should have been able to get a few of these collected by doing either killing raiders or through med bags as you progress through the game. Also, as you're passing through the resort, there's a lot of spawns for meds, and hopefully you would already have these collected. Moving over to the heat exchange alkali service, and you need two of these found in raid. The best places you'll find these are the back of Ollie on interchange, but the next best place is going into shoreline, administration building on the shelves, as well as in the east and west wing and the far ends. Uh, some of the far end rooms can actually have a lot of these barter trade spawns. Corrugated hoses we've already covered on a previous one, but using the lavatory, you can craft corrugated hoses. And the two propane tanks are best found at the back of Ollie on interchange. You will be able to find these quite consistently back there. Cargo X part one. For this one, you are required to go into shoreline. Once in shoreline, you need to head to East 306. This is a locked room. Once inside the room, you'll see the computers and on the chair sitting in front of the computers, you'll see a briefcase. Loot that briefcase, extract the raid and hand this in. Cargo X part two. For this one, you need to head into shoreline again. Head over to the east wing on the bottom floor. Halfway down on the left, you'll find a room that is full of giant water containers. Towards the back of the room, on top of the water containers, you'll see a folder. You pick up that folder and then hand this in. After you've done this, you've completed the task. Cargo X part three. For this one, you're required to find the terror group cargo on shoreline. You need to head into the west wing, into the basement. Once you're into the basement, you'll see a swimming pool, and then on the one end of the swimming pool, you'll see a big hole in the wall, and there'll be the hidden cargo. Just walk up to the wall where the cargo is, and you'll have this quest complete. You'll need to survive the raid to hand it in. Wet job part one. For this one, you are required to head into shoreline and kill 10 scans with a suppressed M4 or ADAR. Just be cautious with this task that if they add a new suppressor to the game, sometimes it takes a little bit for the new suppressor to count towards this task. However, generally most of them do work. 
For killing scabs, I'd highly recommend just doing the same strategy I've told you in the past, which is the bus depot, power station, gas station, and you shouldn't have too much of an issue getting 10 scabs from there. Wet job part two, find the fishing dwelling on shoreline. For this one, you head into shoreline near the tunnel extract, you'll see an island. A lot of people call it Scav Island. Once you head over to the island, uh, you'll see the big hut. Once you're inside the hut, you need to place down an MS-2000 beacon. Once you've marked it, wait the time limit and then survive the raid and extract and hand it in. Wet job part three, find Artem's car. This one is located on the tunnel side of shoreline. Head into shoreline. From the tunnel, you want to run along the road. Eventually, you'll run into a bus that has a car crashed into it. Go towards the car, literally just walk up to the car and that is his car. Once you've found it, you just need to survive the raid and hand it in. Wet job part four. You need to find the list of the resort tenants. For this one, you need to head into shoreline administration building at the resort. Once inside the building, head up to the top floor and turn left. Head to the second room on the right from the end and open the door and you'll see the desk. On side of the desk, there'll be a USB drive just sitting there. Pick up the USB drive and hand it in and you've completed the task. Wet job part five. For this one, you need to find information on Artem's work. You're going to require either the East 328 key or the resort utility key. Personally, I would highly suggest getting the utility key because it opens more than just the one door. Head into the east wing up to the very far end and to the top floor. The utility key will open the furthest door at the end. However, the 328 key is the door next to it. Once inside this room, on top of the computer, you'll see the hard drive that you need to pick up. Once you've picked up this hard drive, survive the raid and hand it in and you've completed wet job part five. Wet job part six. For this task, you're required to get level seven sniper rifle handling skill. With this task, you are required to use the sniper rifle a lot to get it complete. The ways you level sniper rifles is either by chambering around in a sniper rifle or getting hits with one. You can actually get a lot of points just by reloading a Mosin over and over again. However, take note that after about three skill points per raid, you're not going to level it up anymore. Every hit on a scav is between about 0.4 and 0.6 skill points, depending on your diminishing returns as well. So after you've got about six shots on a scav or a player, then you would have already maxed out your points for that raid. There is another task that can assist this one being the mentor task, which requires you to hand in 50,000 euros. I would highly recommend waiting till you have level seven for this task to be handed in because it will assist you on getting a psycho sniper done for the Jaeger storyline. Lendley's part two. For this one, you're required to find the military Cofton wireless signal transmitter and two Vertex programmable processors. You can find these on reserve. The Cofton transmitters are located on the top floor of the Bishop building with the RBAK or AM keys. You don't need the keys to get into these rooms, but the top floor, you can find these on the shelves. For the Vertex programmable processors, this one is located in the Queen building in most of the tech spawn areas, but it is quite rare. The next best bet you have is going into labs and you can check out my labs guide for all the spawns on labs. But at the moment, it's very difficult to not only get these on labs, but also survive for the raid. So finally, the thing I would suggest if you can't get them from the other methods would be getting these in the hideout via the intelligence center. The vertexes do require two military circuit boards, two PC CPUs, and two capacitors. Once you have these items, uh, you can craft them and they will take 37 hours each. I would highly suggest getting the vertexes via this method and the Cofton wireless uh, signal transmitters on reserve, which are pretty common spawn from that Bishop building. Hand these in and then you'll get a lot of money and experience for this quest as well as it should lead to the peacekeeping mission. Peacekeeping mission. For this task, you're required to go into customs, interchange, shoreline and woods and kill 12 scavs whilst using an M4 and dressed up as an Untar soldier, I guess. You need the Untar helmet and vest, which can be bought from Peacekeeper level two. For customs, I would suggest looking towards the dorms and new gas station for scavs. On interchange, going down the main path through the center um, of the mall, and then it, depending on how long you spend in there, you can actually head over towards Oli, Idea, or the power station to get the last scavs. Shoreline, the same strategy as always, straight down the middle being gas station, power station, and the bus depot, and woods, Generally, the scav house area is the best place to get scavs or the lumber mill if the scav boss is up. After you complete killing all these scavs, you'll get a heap of XP and it's definitely a task that's worth doing. The guide. For this task, you are required to survive every map in a row without dying. Now, there are a few strategies for this one. This is my personal one. I generally like to just do a map normally. Doesn't really matter where I go. I just play in the game normally. And then once I do that, I'll go into labs. 
Labs is probably the hardest map to survive in the game at the moment and it costs money to go in there. So I'd just get this one done very early. After surviving Labs, I would go Factory because this is the next friction point and you'd hate to die on Factory right at the very end. After this, every single other map I would do at night time and I would only focus on killing two scavs and extracting the raid. If you kill two scavs, touch a couple of their bodies and then you'll easily have enough, enough XP. The other option is just to hide for 10 minutes and then extract. But my strategy is generally going with an SJ6 stim, which makes you run really far and then just head straight towards the extract and kill two scavs on the way. I'm sure a lot of other people would have other ways of doing this. You can do it as a squad. If you really wanna just cheese it to get out of the way, go as a squad, run all the way to the extract straight away, kill one of your teammates and then loot all his gear and then extract. That would easily give you enough XP to survive the raid. If you do have a run through, you do not need to start this task all the way again from the start, but you will have to redo that one map. Lastly, I'll touch on Mentor. For this task, you are required to hand over 50,000 euros to get three levels in sniper skills. This is easily best used later on as your sniper skills are already higher level. So I would suggest using this at either level six or level seven. So then you can just hand in a psycho sniper straight away. So guys, thanks for watching another video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. It really does help out for the YouTube algorithm. Um, I'm trying to put out all these task guides as quickly as possible. But if you are after any other guides for me, um, go down below, hit up the description. There should be all the other trader tasks as well as you can subscribe and hit the notification bell for the latest information that I am putting out for Escape from Tarkov. If you've got any Tarkov questions, you can feel free to hit me up on my live stream. I do stream on Twitch every day of the week, so you can go down the link below over there. Otherwise, hit me up in the comments. I try my best to reply to as many as possible. Lastly, guys, I'll see you next time.